Okay, so the um, I'm gonna for the moment I'm gonna leave that thread hanging about the um, external link in the browser because again this browser is just a testing tool to sort of emulate uh, a real project. But you saw, and most of you did it also, trying it on a real device gave us the result we're looking for. Trying it on a virtual device gave us the result. So I was taking a quick look at the content security policy website, and here you can look it up. What are all the possibilities? We have uh, frame source is what we were trying to use, frame source defines valid sources for loading frames. Child source is preferred over this deprecated directive. So child frame source doesn't seem to really work anymore. Deprecated, and it says use child source instead. So again, all the documentation is here. I'm not going to spend too much time to fully figure this part out because the documentation is here. Now I'm saying something about the same origin, so that might be it there. But again, we have other things to talk about. This works not quite in the browser, but it works because it's not going for the browser anyway. So I'm going to move on here. What I want to do is explore more of the features of what Cordova is. Remember, we have all of these plugins we've installed. Uh, we're going to look at a few of them. One of them early on is we have the ability for Cordova or Taco to check what device is it running on, <coughs> what features of the device do I have active, and, and such. So we will use the another Cordova API here called uh, Device. Let's take a look at the documentation to see how it works. I shouldn't have closed it, but we can go to cordova.apache.org again. On your web browser, go back to cordova.apache.org. We'll go back to the documentation. And down here under the plugins, we're going to use device. Now, I don't have this on any handout because obviously I don't have a handout for every single thing, just most things. But depending what you're trying to do, if I want to figure out how do I transfer a file, how do I make my app every language? I'm not going to teach that, but here is the documentation for you to teach yourself. We will look at various ones like camera and device and vibration and, and that sort of thing. But do we need the, ca the camera for our app? Maybe not. Do we need um, a file transfer for our app? Maybe not. So that's why we're not going to look at every single thing we can do, but you clearly can. Let's look at device. The plugin defines a global device object, which describes the device's hardware and software. Although the object is in the global scope, if not available, wait until device ready. You'll see that over and over in the documentation. Basically, it says this works best with device ready event. And simply, we have here's an event listener add device ready. That's what we've got in our project with some variation on device ready. And then console log spit out to the console device dot. Cordova. Um, and what that will do, the output will be, what version of Cordova does this device use? <coughs> How to install it, that's done. Here's the particular properties that we can use. Give me the version of Cordova available. Give me the model of the device. Give me the version, the Android version, you need a serial number of the device and all of that. So we have the ability to capture all of this information, to look at it and do something with it. Later on, when we talk about adding the database feature to our project, well, I'll tell you right now already that database works well, but it doesn't work on Android 2.2. So on the oldest devices, 2.2, and market share for that is very low nowadays, like 2% or so, three or four percent. Well, I don't I want people to download my app and use it. It's just that the database portion won't work. So what I'm going to do is use eventually device uh, the device Cordova API to check if this device is higher than a certain version, allow the database. 
if the device is lower than the version, don't allow the database. Let everything else work, but not the database. And maybe, yes, the database is the big feature of our app. Well, we have to decide how to distribute it to more people. We can, getting to month three eventually, upload a version of our APK for some devices and a version of our APK for other devices. We'll talk about all of that later. For the moment, I want to explore how this works. So what we'll do is, uh, basically as soon as the project loads up, what I want to do is um, check what are the features of our device and maybe show them on screen or show them in a console output or something. So let's back up to our let's back up to our JavaScript code. The most basic way is simply, let's do this. Let's go to line 44. <coughs> Give yourself a new line 44. And um, we'll write some console.log output. Device dot. The object is device. And then we've got the property what particular property. We have the list of them all right here. And so if I want to check <coughs> uh, let's see one um, manufacturer. It's simply going to be uh, device.manufacturer. We can save that to a, a variable and then do something with it like if else statements and such. Let's just try for the moment device.manufacturer. At the most basic, this is all that it needs. Uh, save it and run it. If you're running it on a real device, even if you can't control your device, most likely you could still probably see console output. So test this and then open your console output to see what it's telling you. I will do taco run Android device. Wait for that to load up. Okay, so this is loading up on my device. I will open up the developer's console. Remember, click the three dot menu up here. More tools, inspect device. I'm going to inspect my particular connected device. Motorola. You've done it as an alert. Cool. What does it say, Sony? Mm -hmm. So, super easy. This one is simply check what manufacturer it is. We have manufacturer device, unique ID, etc., etc. Not doing very anything special on it. What I could have done much more obviously, maybe we should have done it this way, alert spit this out as an alert and show the manufacturer.
the example over at the documentation has it something more like this, var, and then whatever kind of variable, um, let's say my device equals device.manufacturer. So basically, basically at that exact moment we're running, we're invoking this command and it's checking that particular property of that object and I could do console or I could do alert something fun like you are on a my device device Let's try this. This will be a little more obvious. Uh, it's uh, checking the device manufacturer, saving it as a variable, and then doing an alert. But the alert here we're customizing a little bit um, to say the message, you are on a whatever device. Device. With a little bit of concatenation. If you try it on the, on the browser, this will also give you a result. It should probably say manufacturer Google. Um, on the virtual device, I, it should also say that. So the possibilities of what we can check are all listed right there. And they, they go on to explain here. Notice each particular sort of chapter has the, the, the top level of the API and then various subchapters. So um, Okay, so mine's loading up here. Um, after device is ready, of course, I'll see the splash screen. Then it pops up here. You are on a Motorola device. Motorola is lowercase because they didn't program it as uppercase. But then it popped up here and it says you're on a Motorola device. Maybe we'll try this just to kind of freestyle a little bit. Uh, there's a particular JavaScript conditional statement called switch which will allow us to check for a variety of possibilities we have very we have many ways to to check for conditions conditional statements we've already used if else if something is true do the following or else <coughs> it must be false so do the following this one is a way for us to choose multiple uh, branches here we have the syntax of it is switch in parentheses some expression and then we have cases. In case of this, do this code block and then break. In case of that, do this and then break. And then at the very minimum, a default. If none of these happen, then give a default block. So we'll, we'll play with this for a moment. I'm going to copy and paste this, and then I'll show you so you can type it. If you go back to your, I, if you'd like to copy it yourself, I got it over at w3schools.com. Uh, I searched Google and I got, I searched JS switch case and I got that top result right there. So you can copy and paste from there or I'll show you it right now. If you go back to your JavaScript, um, everything that I've written right here, I'll just delete it or comment it. And instead, let's try something like this. Notice the way it's the syntax switch something I'll give you a moment to, to type all of that uh, but this is a very basic uh, switch conditional statement mind the curly braces and the 
parentheses. It's a very specific um, syntax. There's colons in there as well. Which is sort of like a built-in if-else statement with multiple if-elses. Within that, within those parentheses, we can put an expression. So guess what? In the parentheses, we will put, for example, device.manufacturer. Then under case, we have the case of Samsung, the case of Motorola, the case of XYZ, the case of LG, whatever. We can make multiple cases. I might not be able to think of every manufacturer. So I have a final default. What do I do if I didn't, if I don't have a list of all the manufacturers? Um, there's obviously many uses for this, but just to see how this one works, uh, let's give this a shot. So under switch, the something will be device dot manufacturer. The case here. We'll check in a moment if it, if we need to put this in quotes. I, probably put it in quotes. Let's see what this thing said here. Example. This is doing it as just a number. These are doing it as number. So, so most likely like a string. It's just doing get day. Okay, we'll try with a string with quotes. That would make sense, of course. So, in quotes, um, I know one is Motorola. I just saw it on my device. And on my device, it's lowercase, which, yes, would be different than uppercase Motorola. The second case over here, Samsung. And those are two that I'll figure out. If I wanted to make more, I would obviously copy the case block and the syntax of it is in case of this result, colon, do the following lines of code, break. We're done. Don't check anything else of the conditional statement. If I wanted another manufacturer, I would add that. I would add that uh, another case, and this time say something like LG, assuming that they output LG lowercase. I don't know, they might do it uppercase. This is not the most perfect way to do it. I suppose what we could do is first device dot manufacturer and then to lowercase just to make sure it's all lowercase. Yeah, we might do that. Then the default is well I don't I don't know what it is, give some of the sort of output. So in in this default code block we will simply say uh, alert uh, don't know your device. When all else fails the default fires, so I'll just make it say something. And we need semicolons at the end of those. Okay, so in case it's a Motorola, I would say alert or something to that effect to then say, uh, quote, welcome Motorola user. And of course, for Samsung, I would make it say something like that. LG, LG user. So you see the logic of this conditional statement. These are the conditions. The drawback, of course, is I have to have all of these possibilities defined. Because the default all else fails might be very generic. Go ahead and run that and see if that if that works. This is the tip of the iceberg to do something much more complex because what if I had, what if I was doing this as, you know, manufacturer or, or device and I have iOS, you know, that sort of concept. And so I would run a function called run 
iOS code. I have to define the function to make all of that special iOS stuff happen, but that, would, that could be the point of using device, the Cordova device API. Use it to figure out what device we're running and run some special code or do something special per device, per Cordova version, all the things we can check for. Because we will use the device API later on for our um, database. We'll have to check, uh, I believe, version. If it's a higher version of, of Android than what we specify, then it's okay to use the database. If it's a lower version, we just will not uh, have the database function functionality. But everything else would work. The map would work and the external in-app browser and everything else. So it's loading up on my device, finally. Splash screen pops up. Welcome Motorola user, obviously. Um, if you run it on yours, hopefully then it either, if you've got one of these kinds of devices, it should say a message. And uh, if it's not any of those devices, then it'll go to the default. So, any questions on the device API? That's interesting. I, I, sh I should check it, but I, I suppose uh, maybe device, maybe Chrome. It's maybe the Google Google is not the manufacturer of Google Chrome. I don't know. I don't know why they didn't output it that way. Uh, but that's why testing all of this is valuable to figure out in all of these cases. Okay. What we'll do is we will uh, look at another thing that we can do with Cordova. There is, this one is fun, let's do vibration, depending on your device, of course. So vibration, um, how does it work, concept, etc. It works on all of these, basically. The basic syntax is navigator.vibrate. That's the basic of it, but then we will see that with this one, we can also specify time intervals. Have it vibrate in milliseconds a certain amount of time. Example, navigator.vibrate, 3,000 milliseconds, also known as 3 seconds. iOS quirk, ignores the specified time and vibrates for a preset amount of time. So with iOS, if you set this up to vibrate for 5 seconds, whatever the iOS spec is, it will only vibrate for 1.5 seconds or whatever it is with iOS. For Windows, it's got a maximum time of 5 seconds. You can vibrate with a pattern only for Android and Windows. So if you do it in this sort of way, as an array, vibrate for 1 second, then 1 second, then 3 seconds, then 1 second, then 5 seconds. But that will only uh, apply for Android and Windows devices. And some things for other ones. Okay, so the way we'll do this is simply navigator.vibrate with a time interval. Let's say in addition to, since we've already got some code here, in addition to this switch, I know mine's a Motorola, so just to do it quickly, I'll do it here. I'll do navigator.vibrate, option of, just to make it obvious, five seconds. and run it. Obviously in your web browser this will not work, your computer will not shake. If you do this on a virtual device, <laughs> if you do it, well it might shake in California, but if you run it on a uh, laptop, 
you probably will not shake. So this is one of the ones you really want to check on a real device. Obviously, just for fun, I could say different time intervals depending on these different cases. We can tie this together with a dialog box. We'll look at dialog boxes in a moment. What if you have some input and then a dialog box to give you a warning or an error? To really make it obvious to the user, make it vibrate in addition to the dialog box. Because we have the very default, the very basic alert method, and we have the basic prompt method, but those don't look like a real pop-up input box like on iOS or Android. We have, we'll see in a moment, the Cordova API that makes a dialog box look like it's an Android dialog box, like it's an iPhone dialog box. And here's my device, local Motorola user. Well, of course I put mine on silent so you don't hear anything. Okay, so hopefully you heard that. That was five seconds. So, okay. Vibrate the device. So we should be seeing that the Cordova API are like puzzle pieces modules. We have these 19 or so plugins where we can do different things. There's no mention there, however, of a Bluetooth. How can I access Bluetooth? We can access Bluetooth also. But what if I want to do QR code scanning? We can do QR code scanning. It's not mentioned in the photo documentation. These are the default basic features of a device. But if I do a search, Cordova QR code scanner plugin. Someone has invented some Cordova plugin for us. Just like most good open source, there's many interpretations. Doing just a quick search here. Here's someone's version of it. <coughs> Um, your code and such. Um, phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. These these are outside of the Cordova website. Look at this one. So Wildebeest published one. It's over on GitHub. There's the documentation. So these are outside of the the Cordova website. So it's individual people figuring these things out, putting the stuff out there and then it's up to them to do the documentation. Um, and you might see to install the barcode scanner, phone gap, plugin, add, etc. Again, don't get confused because it says phone gap instead of Cordova or instead of Taco. Make a note, and remember this as soon as you can, any example code that we see out there that is in this syntax, you just replace phone gap or Cordova with Taco. Taco plugin add phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner and that would add the barcode scanner feature to our project how do you use it you read the documentation hopefully it's got examples live code and all of that 
this is the good and the bad about it. The good is Cordova is open source, anyone can add to it. The bad thing is Cordova is open source, anyone can add to it. So unless they also provide a good documentation, a good secure plugin, not full of spyware, this is amazing. On the flip side, now I believe over at what's the address? NPMJS, npmjs.com. This is also, yeah, this might be a better way to do it rather than a plain old Google search. npmjs.com, npm, node package manager. This is the official sort of like uh, app store repository depository of the Cordova plugins. Any good developer is going to want to, to be here. This is like an official app store where people can comment and say bugs and say watch out for this plugin and all of that. So instead of doing a plain old search where anything will pop up, we have here uh, bar code different versions. And the point of this is, and this looks to be pretty much the same as the other one, but here is in like a real package manager spot where people can where people can also contribute their issues and comment and such. <coughs> So we have these modular pieces, these puzzle pieces built into Cordova, and then we have a whole world out there of more plugins to further have your app do more. We we saw we saw uh, vibration, we saw splash screen. We did this uh, rather by rote. Uh, previously when we were setting up our splash screen but there's more documentation here how it actually works we did um, splash screen dot hide or something like that navigator yeah we, we put this into our into our JS file early on navigator dot splash screen dot hide that was our first Cordova plugin we used stealthily because we have a splash screen that we want to hide after X amount of time automatically. Well, the whole gory details are found here. You can show a splash screen when you want. So in the middle between going from page to page, if you want, you can show your splash screen. It's navigator.splashscreen.show. You have to remember to hide it, because if you show it, you have to hide it. It, it doesn't automatically go away. What I want to do, though, more tangibly, I want to look at... Um, Dialogues. Let's play with dialogues here. On the left side, look at dialogues. We will have an alert, a native looking alert box, a confirmation, a native looking confirmation box, a prompt, and interestingly, beep. This is how you can make your app beep at your users when they make a mistake. There's another way for it to play a specific sound and music in your app that's a different one. But here is a dialogue, even though it's an audio dialogue rather than a visual one. We can play with these for a moment. And the plug is installed already. We just need to use it. Alert. The way it works is navigator.notification.alert with various options. This one is very common the way this one is set up. Message which is required, alert callback, which is required, title and button name, which are optional. And you often know what's optional. <coughs> um, it tells you here, of course, but square brackets in documentation often means optional. And so what we can do is dialog, uh, put a message, What's, what's the message that will appear, which will be a string, so in quotes. Alert callback. Call back to invoke when alert dialog is dismissed, a function. This is going to take a function, but, with, but not with the parentheses. Then we've got some options. Title. Dialog title. What 
optionally, would you like to show at the top of your little pop-up box another string? <coughs> and then we've got button name. The alert box just has one button. It has the OK button. But if you don't want it to say OK, optionally you can make it say Great. So in, as a string, you give it the fourth uh, parameter. Here's an example. Notice they wrote it here divided into separate lines, perfectly fine. First line is the message, then this, then this, and that. So to save ourselves some effort, I'm going to copy the uh, the little example there. Oh, actually, don't forget the the function up here. Copy that whole example. The example is like you're playing a game. A pop-up will happen. You are the winner. The person clicks done. And then the alert dismissed function is invoked. And notice the syntax, no parentheses there. The title will say game over. We're calling a function so we can do many things in that function. Like make it play a sound make it vibrate, make it clear your score, save your high score, etc. It's a function. You can do then anything. So I've copied it and let's say we will add this we'll have it happen automatically. It'll be annoying very quickly, but we'll have it happen automatically just to see what it looks like. We'll say before load name, all that that you copied, paste it right before it. And if we just leave it as is, it'll work. Because we've got the object of navigator, specifically the property navigation, and the method alert open close parentheses, first option is the message that appears. So we'll say something like, uh, we'll say new version to something. What's a callback function? If you copied and pasted, it brought it along with with it, you, this can be called anything, it can be called kitty cat. But of course, you want to make sure that your function is also called kitty cat. What's the text that appears at the top? Uh, notice. And then the button. If you don't put anything here, it'll say OK. Here we say done. Or you can be like the all of these modern apps that are very personal now. Instead of saying OK or Cancel, it's going to say Groovy and Nah, man. So make it say whatever you want it to say here. <coughs> On the something, before I finish here, we will do Navigator dot Notification dot Beep let it beep. And on this one, we can specify, for example, three beeps. Notification. Notification. So we're going to say, this pop-up will happen as soon as the app loads. We click Groovy, and then the result will be three beeps, depending on your device. So yes, I will allow you to raise the volume on your devices so you can hear it. And um, You should hear some beeps once you've once you've launched your app. Let me confirm my syntax. Navigator dot beep. Uh, yep, it's simply times. How many times will it beep?
there you go, three beeps. Now the beeps are the default sound of your device. So, okay, here's mine coming up. Of course it's going to vibrate for five seconds. And then I've got the pop-up, notice, new version, and then I'll click Groovy. <coughs> Okay, so my default device had that sound, and that's what it played. It's just going to go with the default error message, or whatever it is, the default sound of your device. In a different Cordova API, we can load a specific sound, of course. But here's just the very basic alert of a beep. So every time you open and close your app, it's going to do this weird stuff. There you go, three beeps. And so... Just for testing purposes, of course, this seems to work. So then you want to um, comment this stuff out because it's right away this is going to be happening. We're invoking this automatically. Um, Navigator.notification alert, it just does it. It'd be better to be put to put it into some sort of function with some with a trigger. There you go. One beep, two beeps, three beeps. Same thing here with this switch. It just did it right away. Obviously, when we put them into functions, then we can call them with some sort of trigger. We have the uh, load name function that runs right away, and a variety of things happen. These ones, we didn't put them into a function, so they just happen quickly. If you got it to work, great. Now what we'll do is... I'm going to select all of that code that I just wrote, and I'll go up to the edit menu, comment, uncomment, single or block comment. Notepad lets you comment things in a big block very quickly. We know it works. We don't need to hear it every single time. So let me show again this trick. In Notepad, if you select multiple lines, so I'm selecting the switch down to the end of navigator alert, which in my case is lines 45 to 73. You go up to edit, you have uh, comment, uncomment, block comment, and that'll quickly create a block comment, JavaScript block comment around everything you've selected. So we know it works, we don't have to keep hearing that it works. I'm going to take one more break to make sure it works for everyone. I'll put my code in the network folder, and then we'll, we'll look at another thing. We'll look at camera. Hey, that sounds cool. We will be able to take photos with our project. That needs a little more setup because it's the trigger and the placeholder and a bunch of stuff. But it's all in the Cordova documentation, and we'll do it right after the break. So it is um, 8.38. We'll take a break until 8.48, and then we'll look at camera.